Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, Pakistan-China model friendship stands unique in world ridden with interstate conflicts, rivalries and war. Established on 21st May 1951, Pak-China relations have keep, kept growing with time. Although both countries have different political systems, follow different religions and are racially different, the bonds between the friend the bonds of friendship has become warmer and stronger with the passage of time. In the last seven decades, there is no single occasion where two countries have encountered any differences of opinion on any issues. There is always complete harmony between the two countries. Few relations, relationships in history of international relations have endured so long as seven decades that between Pakistan and China, and even fewer have been described as higher than mountains and deeper than oceans. This is what we call all-weather friendship. This description of all-weather friendship is not mere rhetoric. It's based on shared principles and interests and forms foundation of cooperation in diverse fields. Pakistan strongly supports one China policy and China sovereignty over Tibet and Taiwan, as well as other issues concerning China's core interests. Similarly, China has always more than appreciated Pakistan's gestures and support. Beijing has supported Islamabad on a wide range of issues, such as Pakistan's recent membership in Shanghai Corporation Organization. Relations between the two states are not just limited to political and economic spheres. Pakistan and China signed the Cultural Cooperation Agreement in 1965, which has evolved into an ex executive program of cultural exchange, with the both countries vowing to cooperate in fields of arts, culture, education, research and broadcasting, media publication, sports and youth affairs. Pakistan-China relations are perhaps the best example of cooperation between two countries having different social system, culture, traditions and ideologies. The five principles of mutual respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity, non-aggression, non-interference in each other's internal affairs, equality and mutual benefit. A peaceful coexistence have made the two sides what they are today. As good neighbors, sincere friends, trusted partners and iron brothers who share wheel and woe, we will continue to build upon our mutual trust with the guidance of high-level exchanges, deep coordination and cooperations on major strategic issues and support each other on issues involving our respective core interests and major concerns. CPEC, a wholly new dimension has been added to historic bond between two countries. By launched China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, a flagship project of China's Belt and Road Initiatives. Thanks to the Belt and Road Initiative, Pakistan is going to become the hub of regional trade and connectivity, which are sure to grow rapidly in coming years. The CPEC has opened a new era of fruitful cooperation, with Chinese investment pouring into Pakistan and several mega projects being launched in the field of power generation and transmission. The basic infrastructure such as motorways, railways, airports, seaports, oil, gas pipelines, and optical fiber linkage are being upgraded and strengthened. In fact, Pakistan has already begun reaping the dividends of CPEC rail and road infrastructure projects. CPEC in investment and its uh, spin-off effects have created thousands of jobs and added 10,000 megawatts to Pakistan national grid, ameliorating the chronic shortage of energy in the country. Balochistan stands at the center of China-Pakistan economic corridor. Starting on Chinese-Pakistani border, the corridor makes its way south into Balochistan down to the port of Gwadar, which is jewel and crown under the CPEC agreement, has committed 
a total of China has committed a total of $1.62 billion for modernizing the port. Gwadar is likely to become a special economic zone similar to Dubai, Hong Kong, and Macau. For China, Gwadar could drastically shorten the time it takes to trade with Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. If Pakistan-China version for Gwadar comes to fruition, it could very well become epicenter of China's trade with countries of the West, a scenario that would reshape international trade in Indian Ocean. According to the Asian Development Bank, the CPEC agreement offers enormous potential for Pakistan to boost its economy, reduce poverty, spread benefits widely, and help those likely to be affected by the new trade route. Opposition to CPEC. However, as project has made progress, it has increasingly became a victim of false propaganda, conspiracy theories, and covetous eyes cast by hostile forces. All kinds of wild, made-up, imaginary charges are being made against the development project is designed to become immense economic benefits to Pakistan and Baluchistan. Detractors, accusation ranges, accusations range from plunder of Baluchistan, immense natural wealth, and sell out of the province minerals and other resources to the Chinese. Who are the critics and naysayers? Groups in Baluchistan opposing the CPEC fall in two main categories. One, political. Second, socio-cultural. The political opposition comprises of two elements, one patriotic elements and genuine friends of Baloch people who are concerned about Baluchistan getting its due and legitimate rights of economic benefit flowing from the CPEC projects. Some of them have complained that as compared to other provinces, Baluchistan has been unfairly treated in terms of distribution of the burdens and benefits of CPEC projects. They are part of national political mainstream and their grievances need to be looked and addressed. Recently, Jam Kamal Khan, Baluchistan Chief Minister, had and other Baluch leaders demanded public closure of details of lease agreements of Gwadar Port with China. All CPEC projects and all 52 memorandum of understanding signed between Pakistan and China. They criticized the OPQ deal concluded with Chinese companies by the former Pakistan, National, Pakistan Muslim League government since 2014 and desired more transparent deals. CPEC has a portfolio of more than 60 billion of which, according to one estimate, only 400 million have been allocated to Baluchistan, mainly focused on development of Gwadar port. Investment in road and energy infrastructure in vast swathes of Baluchistan needs focus. Baluchistan shoulders most of the CPEC burden. The region has 700 kilometers of coastlines, including deep port of Gwadar which is slated to be the linchpin of CPEC. It has rich mineral resources and provides 62% of the land for corridor. Its residents will also face an environmental fallout of the mega projects. Some Baloch leaders say that out of total, total 15 energy projects worth $33 billion, only one was meant for Balochistan, while the rest went to Punjab and Sindh. On the, of the 13 electric grid stations for 500 kV transmission lines, Balochistan got, on, Balochistan got none. Such unfair distribution of CPEC benefits has given opportunists a chance to propagate negativity among people. To, make and, and to ensure an equal stake and set in CPEC investments, it is important to engage the people of Baluchistan in an inclusive, consensus-based decision-making process. Railway, roads, mining, and agriculture development can 
have huge positive impact on lives of masses. Second political category in Baluchistan opposing CPEC consists of two. The Sardars who see the progress of economic development and social opening as a threat to their entrenched interests and the nationalist and rebel groups who are opposed to the process of political, economic and social integration of Pakistan with rest of Pakistan, Baluchistan with rest of Pakistan. Many of these groups are being funded by India and other forces hostile to the CPEC. It is no secret that Baloch nationalists have long been opposed to the Chinese presence and investment projects in Balochistan. They are apprehensive about CPEC developments in their province as they fear the waves of investment will bring them demographic changes, turning them into a minority in their own province. Since the launch of CPEC, Baloch Liberation Army attacks the Attacks large have, uh, army attacks have largely been focused on Chinese interest. Several deadly attacks on Chinese laborers have taken place since May 2017, which, according to BLS spokesmen, are part of BLS policy of not allowing any forces, including China, to plunder the Baloch wealth in Baluchistan. Other significant attacks including November 2018, attack on Chinese consulate in Karachi, and on May 2019, attack on Pearl's Continental Hotel in Gwadar. But make no mistake, the mass of Baloch people want progress and good life. About 75% of Baloch live in rural areas. They also want, want to be part of development process. More and more Baloch are educated, literate, and aware of their political rights. Beside Baluchistan, a large number of Baloch youth are studying in different universities of Punjab, Sindh and Khyber Khwar provinces. However, it will be in Chinese interest to grant scholarship to Baloch students in their universities that will create better understanding between the Chinese and Baloch. Certainly, uh, will create goodwill and enhance friendship between two people. Baloch youth, after completion of their education, mostly remain jobless. There is an excellent opportunity for the government to involve Baloch youth in CPEC-related projects to both create jobs for them and bring Baloch population into the mainstream, national mainstream. Baloch need to see and feel that development coming with CPEC is for them. The promised development of Baluchistan through a series of large-scale projects must be translated into practice. Concrete steps are needed to dispel misplaced fears of Baluch people being dispossessed from their lands, resources and identity. Moreover, their misgivings have uh, economic migration, uh, misgivings have about economic migration to the province and fear of becoming a minority in their own land as a result are genuine problems and that need to be taken seriously. Cultural and communication gaps. A major obstacle in the smooth process of CPEC project is cultural and communication gap between the Chinese managers and workers and the people and the Baloch population. It is necessary to minimize misunderstanding and the conflict caused by cultural differences. Baloch and Chinese people hail from different cultural backgrounds. They look different, they behave and act different and speak different languages. They eat different foods and wear different dresses. For an ordinary Baloch, a Chinese man is like someone from another planet, an alien. Another fundamental difference is their attitude to life and work. The psychological and mental programming of two people is different. There is, no, there is nothing wrong with this, given the fact that they are product of two different civilizations, environmental condition, cultural, tradition, and social landscape. With the CPAC projects gaining momentum and coming, to, coming on stream, more Chinese engineers, technicians will come 
into contact with Baloch people, especially Baloch workers who will be employed to complete and operate the projects. Given different conducts, uh, conducts norms and the work ethics and absence of common medium of communication, conflict situation may arise which will need to be handled prudently and resolved by ensuring better culture and cross-cultural communication the possibility of conflict situations arising can be minimized this approach will require chinese to learn the local language and learning to respect the local tradition and values importantly chinese engineers and technicians selected to work for cpec must be put through course of studies covering such subjects as Pakistan history, religion, customs, politics, education, and so on. Besides, the improvement of basic communication skills will be also required. Engineering in course cultural activities will be helpful in getting to know the local people better and make friends with them. More contact will reduce the chances of misunderstandings and prejudice against each other. The process is painstaking, but it is sure to yield fruitful result. To bridge the cultural gap, it will be a rewarding exercise to take notice of cultural, cross-cultural conflicting situations happening on a day-to-day basis, analyze their causes and develop system and procedures to avoid them in future. Overcoming cultural differences or feelings of strangeness will take time. This process will go forward step by step. Ultimately, it will become a two-way process. Learning benefits from both sides. Thank you.